Ladies and gentlemen, Buddy Fisher. All right. Thank you very much, Cliff. Really appreciate you being here. Although I kind of have a short introduction for this next fellow, Sean Murphy has been instrumental in promoting positive atheism and secular activism in and around Charlotte. He has worked to create and foster a close-knit community of non-believers and to put a positive face on atheism through education, public outreach, and community service. Under Sean's leadership as president, Charlotte Atheists and Agnostics have seen an influx of new members and continues to grow every day. In addition to his work with CAA, Sean is also involved with the Carolina Secular Association and currently holds the position of secretary. I have encountered Sean at C CAA social gatherings and he always works the room with his award-winning smile and his welcoming demeanor. I appreciate the work he does and the lives that he touches. Please welcome the president of the Charlotte Atheists and Agnostics Mr. Sean Murphy. All right, just give me a couple moments here to set up. Uh, first, I'd like to thank Gene for making this uh, event possible. This is really great to be here. Thanks, Gene. I also want uh, to thank Gene for allowing me to follow a uh, professional politician and former preacher because we all know, in comparison, my speaking skills are going to be amazing. <laughs> Hello and happy National Day of Reason. I'm so excited to be here to celebrate reason. It's that favorite human attribute of mine. There are many, many wonderful human characteristics. Compassion, creativity, adaptability, perseverance, imagination, just to name a few. But rationality is the one that I value the most. It stands above the rest. It can be employed to enhance the others. It is reason, more than anything else in my opinion, that makes us human. Even before I understood exactly what it was, I valued it. I remember constantly asking when I was a child why things are the way they are, why certain rules are in place, and why I was asked to, to do certain things, like put on such uncomfortable shoes, be shoes before we left for church. This, of course, exasperated many of the adults in my life. I'm sure many of you have had similar experiences. As a kid, do any of you remember hearing, because I said so, as a response when you asked a question? I certainly did. Okay, the reason is because they say so. Fair enough, they know a lot more than me, I'm only a kid. They must be an authority on the subject. It was only much, much later that I began to wonder if appealing to authority is such a good reason. In contrast, my father took time to explain things to me, even when he knew I was too young to understand what he was saying. You see, he valued reason, like us. He recognized its importance. And like other adults, I considered him an authority. He seemed to know a lot. Unlike the other authorities, though, he backed up his explanations. He gave me facts. He used logic. Furthermore, he was the only uh, adult in my life who would admit when he didn't know something and then follow it up with a trip to the library so I can look it up for myself. He would ask me to find my own facts and, and synthesize those facts in a logical fact fashion to form my own opinion. In other words, he taught me to learn and uh, reason for myself. I it's my hope that you have had somebody in your life like my father who taught you the importance of reason. 
The value this had in my life cannot be overstated. My natural inclination towards reason and being made to practice it led me towards, uh, took me towards studying mathematics in college, which eventually led uh, to my career in financial analytics. It also uh, led to me to my secular activism, which is why I'm here today. More importantly though, reason has made me a better person. Like you, reason informs my ethics. It acts like an enormous compassion amplifier for us. It was through its application that we realized that all people are worthy of ethical treatment. The natural compassion we feel for our friends and family has been extended to be more inclusive. Thinking about issues as varied as human sexuality and global politics made me come to the conclusion that it is only by coincidence that I happen to have the skin color that I do, that I'm attracted to the people that I am, and that my gender and my anatomy align in the way that they do, that I was born in this great country, that I have the aptitudes that I do, and that I have had the opportunities that I did. I could have just as easily ended up in very different circumstances in the global community. This recognition makes me yearn for less suffering, more opportunities, and universal justice for every living person. More than that, it motivates me to want to change the world and make it better for future generations. And now, I've got a uh, rather dark confession to make. The year was 1993, and I was a teenage fundamentalist. I attended a church that taught a very dogmatic, dogmatic and legalistic uh, version of Christianity. And I bought every word of it. So of course I believed homosexuality was not only sinful, but the, the practitioners deserved the discrimination they experienced. But then I thought about it. I realized my opinions on the subject were based on authority. Yet another adult, this time in standing in front of an altar, was using, because I said so, to justify what he was telling me. Equipped with a more mature mind, I was able to ask, sure, but why do you say so? What are your reasons for saying so? The answers amounted to more appeals to authority. Ultimate authority, they said. I was unconvinced. I decided to form my own justifications for my homophobia. None of them stood up to reason. I was forced, by reason, to reject homophobia, which in turn enabled me to feel compassion for their cause. I educated myself on the topic and became an LGBTQ advocate and ally. Reason enabled me to leave my Bible-thumping days behind, although bubble-thumping thumping sounds awfully fun too. <laughs> It expanded my thinking and eventually led me to become the president of Charlotte Atheists and Agnostics. Two years ago, our organization asked our city's mayor to issue a proclamation for the Day of Reason. I remember when I went to pick up our proclamation in the mayor's office. There on the secretary's desk were two identical envelopes, one of which was for our organization and proclaimed a Day of Reason. The other, well, that was for another national day that happens to fall on the same date. It seems that the uh, mayor also proclaimed a day of prayer for another organization. Last year, the mayor again issued proclamations for both the day of reason and the day of prayer. That year, that week uh, aligned with the same week in which it was announced that our mayor, Mayor Fox, was tagged to be the next transportation secretary for President Obama's administration. Needless to say, proclaiming a day of reason and a day of prayer in that same week caused no small amount of controversy. It actually received national press, and it was quite interesting. Unfortunately, this year, the mayor's office is issuing neither a day of reason nor a day of prayer proclamation. Now, while I understand their desire to avoid another controversy, it's unfortunate the new mayor does not publicly recognize the universal value of reason. Reason drives so many of our worthy pursuits. It contributes to our language, mathematics, philosophy, and it even informs our art. Even for something as basic as religion, I'm sorry. <clears throat> even for something as basic as language, every single sentence I speak, you must be able to rationally synthesize and uh, to understand my meaning. 
Likewise, rationality is required on my part to form sentences that can be understood by each of you. Without reason, language would be reduced to a bunch of gibberish, a bit like speaking in tongues, if you will. Mathematics is a kind of distilled reason. For a, uh, all you gotta do is make a few simple, reasonable assumptions, say like Euclid's axioms, add some definitions, and apply some mathematics, and you have an entire field of mathematics. Everything we associate with the modern age requires mathematics. Every building, every vehicle, every piece of electronics, even the clothes you are wearing, were made possible by this distilled form of reason. This alone should be re uh, reason enough to give every person a cause to celebrate today, the day of reason. Going further, we have philosophy, which of course has hugely influenced our civilization. One of the more common definitions of philosophy is the application of reason to discover truth. Natural philosophy gave birth to science, which along with mathematics, created the technologies which have transformed our lives for the better. Through the examination of the human body and the microscopic world, natural philosophy also gave rise to modern medicine. For generations now, our life expectancy and quality of health has improved. Diseases once thought to have been fatal have been reduced to minor nuisances, or like in the case of smallpox, eradicated entirely. Thanks to reason, all of us can expect to live twice as long as compared to those living only 150 years ago. Think about that for a moment. Double the life, thanks to reason. Just as important, if not more important, is how re uh, moral philosophy has improved how we treated one another. Clearly, it's natural to feel compassion for our friends, family, and those in our community. That's easy. However, left to its own devices, Compassion we feel for others is all too often proportional to how much we see them as being like ourselves. It's why we see more in the news about the unrest in Ukraine than we do about the same in Venezuela, and why we see more about both than the ongoing human atrocities being committed in southern Sudan. Each of those places we see as being less like America, and it's hard for us to feel compassion. The application of reason can destroy these limitations. They can make us realize that we are all people with the same capacities for joy and suffering. We are all, therefore, entitled to the same ethical considerations. Everyone, no matter how different, has value and is deserving of a good life. Reason reveals this truth when moral intuition alone fails to expose it. The moral philosophers of the past used reason to argue for the fair treatment of different races, women, children, and the LGBTQ community. Even this seemingly modern civil rights movement has philosophical origins further in the past. The great utilitarian thinker, Jeremy Bentham, wrote an essay condemning the practice of executing homosexuals that was once commonplace in England. In 1785, less than a decade after America declared itself independent from England, he reasoned the following. As to any primary mischief, it is evident that it produces no pain in anyone. To the contrary, it produces pleasure. And as to any danger exclusive of pain, the danger, if any, must consist in the tendency of the example. But what is the tendency of the example? To dispose others to engage in the same practice. But this practice produces not pain of any kind to anyone. What Bentham wrote is familiar to LGBTQ activists and allies nearly two and a half centuries later. There was no rational basis to call immoral an act between two consenting adults that harms no one. Examples of philosophers making rational arguments that plant the seeds for future cultural changes can be seen in other movements throughout history. The abolition of slavery, civil rights, women's rights, children's rights, even animal rights. With each of these improvements, tradition was first challenged by reason. Once a person is convinced of the unreasonableness of a traditional practice like slavery, the cognitive dissonance experienced by the individual eventually caused that person to feel the wrongness of the practice. Convince enough people, and society begins to change for the better. For instance, we no longer need to form rational arguments about why slavery is wrong. We all know it. We know it so well, we feel it, 
even if we had forgotten that it first required reason to challenge the institution of slavery and start the change. As you can see, philosophy not only made possible the comforts and conveniences of modern medicine and technology, it made us treat one another better. The era in which these philosophies first started to come forth and challenge religious tradition is so reliant on reason, it is known as the age of reason. I believe we have a duty to continue this trend, to use reason to promote positive changes within our society. You would think, with all these wondrous advances reason has made possible, no one would ever oppose it. Please, don't be fooled. Our society, for the last few decades, we have seen the reemergence of anti-rationalism. They have always been with us. They celebrate tradition, even when those traditions are harmful. They celebrate faith, even when that faith has been twisted to serve politics. Perhaps worst of all, they celebrate authority, even when authority has no legitimacy. You can see it in the so-called scientific creationism, also known as intelligent design. It ad its advocates want it treated as science and taught in our schools. They even go through the trouble of dressing up their traditional religious beliefs in the trappings of reason. They invent principles much the same way a scientist might form a hypothesis. They search for evidence in support of that principle. In doing so, they concede the primacy of reason. They recognize that in order to convince people, they must at least appear to be using reason. So even then, the value of reason is recognized. Otherwise, why go through all the trouble of thinly veiling creationism with pseudo-rationalism? When pressed, whether it's by our legal system or in de debates with Bill Nye, they always abandon their pretense and return to the authority of their holy books as justification. You can also see this in the global ch climate change denial. The evidence is in. The scientific consensus has been formed. Our planet's climate is changing. And like with creationism, the de deniers dress up their beliefs as rational even though they're not. They cite debunked studies. They cite faulty surveys. They cite the vanishingly small numbers of dissenting scientists. They pay false homage to rationality to sell it to rational people. You can see it in the anti-vaccination movement. The same techniques of pseudo-rationalism are employed to defend the indefensible, to render innocent children susceptible to potentially fatal diseases. These teachings are poison to our society. Utilizing pseudoscience and pushing through public policy that treats it on par with legitimate science, they are sowing the seeds of confusion. Generations upon generations of, of students will grow up mistaking opinion with scientific fact if they have their way. Such confusion could slow our progress. Future life-saving technologies could be missed in the muddle created by these anti-intellectual methods. The ongoing debate of global climate change has already cost us valuable time that could have been spent mitigating the problem. The pernicious persistence of the anti-vaccination advocates has already cost lives and has allowed the reemergence of diseases like whooping cough, measles, and tuberculosis. We need to equip children with the means to, de to detect the anti-rational wolf in sheep's clothing. This is why we draw a clear distinction between real science and pseudoscience. This is why we must teach all children critical thinking skills. This is why we must teach all children to challenge authority so that just because I say so is not a good enough reason. This is why we proclaim a day of reason. Thank you.